That was Dr. Jeffrey Brown. I feel healthier and better already. And our next guest is on the phone. Stuart Elliott has spent more than three decades covering advertising, marketing, and media. He's perhaps best known as the advertising columnist for the New York Times, a post he held from May 1991 to December 2014. He's now a freelancer writing for publications, including Media Village, and he's also moderating panels as well as speaking to agencies, students, and organizations, and at this very moment, to Rob Taub and Tony Simone. Welcome, Stuart. Welcome, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I understand that you wanted to chat with us about the network upfronts? Yeah, they were uh, recently held in uh, in New York, the annual uh, media extravaganza where the uh, – Big television networks present their false schedules to the uh, advertising community in hopes of uh, getting some uh, ad dollars. Well, as a former writer and producer of television shows, I've had some of my my most memorable evenings at the upfronts at Tavern on the Green. So, love talking about it. I'm gl- I'm surprised that you can remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it it's blurry, but but I I think that I had a good time. I I was told I didn't embarrass myself too terribly. Oh, okay, okay. Um, the big uh, the big takeaway from this year's upfronts was that, uh, despite many years of uh, people on the sidelines expecting the upfronts to go away, uh, they really still haven't, and uh, that's of uh, of interest. Because- well, let's preface for our audience exactly what the upfronts is because it's such a unique evening or or series of events you you go into wherever it's being held and picture the stars of every one of your favorite tv shows there in different areas or kiosks waiting to to befriend and take photographs with advertisers would that be a good way to yeah and and, and that's and that's preceded by by presentations by the top executives of all the networks who outline uh what they have planned uh for the fall schedules and uh the whole point of this is to entice uh, advertisers into buying commercials uh, during the programs. Uh, the interesting thing right now is that because the uh, the TV industry and so many other industries are in such a state of flux right now, uh, the big question among a lot of people is what is going to happen moving forward with the upfronts. There's uh, another set of meetings that go on in New York for a couple of weeks uh, before the upfronts now, and those are called the new fronts, and those are put on by uh, the big uh, digital uh, media companies as well as by uh, some of the traditional media companies that are trying to show the advertisers that they too uh, understand that uh, things are changing and that – uh, the world is uh, is becoming very different. Than Are that. things changing because we have shows like Game of Thrones and Ray Donovan and other great or cable House shows? House of Cards. House of Cards. And Netflix. Uh, yeah, the, the, I would say it's mostly the latter, the fact that there's now streaming uh, video and that that's a, uh, uh, an alternative among millions and millions of, uh, of people. That's, uh, that's made a big difference, the idea that you have... Uh, Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and uh, some of these other streaming services that uh, that uh, provide entertainment options to viewers uh, that uh, that is making a big difference and then on top of that you have some of the big uh, traditional media companies traditional TV companies like uh, CBS and ABC and NBC uh, trying to figure out how to meet that challenge, and in some cases, they themselves are uh, doing the same thing with streaming video. There's a service that uh, NBC Universal has introduced called CISO, which is a uh, a comedy, uh, a collection of comedy shorts and comic uh, uh, TV shows from the past that you subscribe to, and it's uh, online only. And uh, uh, the idea being that. Uh, this is a way for them to compete against some of their uh, new arrivals and at the same time learn uh, from that uh, what uh, new and different things they may need to do uh, on television. Stuart, how is that affecting the, uh, the ad budgets and the networks? Well, it's, it's, having, a big, uh, it's having a big effect because uh, in a lot of cases the, the advertisers feel that they need to uh, move money 
from the traditional uh, advertising uh, outlets like TV and radio and uh, and newspapers uh, to the new uh, to the new media because that's where the that's where the consumers are. That's where the eyeballs and the and the ears are. Uh, but at the same time, uh, some of these traditional media companies are also at the, uh, operating new media uh, outlets as well. So, uh, how do, how might... how who's going to wrangle all of the content? I just made a note. It's like you almost need a content concierge to to attend to every person because you could just spend <laughs> all day looking at material. It's like this woman who put on the Chewbacca mask has gotten over. 10 million hits and she's been on every major tv show and she actually did a bit with jj abrams himself yeah and and and, and two weeks from now we won't remember who she and is. no one will know who <laughs> she is unless unless so somebody her gives her spent. own tv show <laughs> well that's the that's the uh that's part of the uh the issues that are facing the advertising industry right now is that there's uh uh people are changing their habits particularly younger people and uh the idea of being uh, your own, uh, your own, uh, your concierge in charge of uh, figuring out what you want to watch and when you want to watch it and how you want to watch it. Uh, uh, younger people seem to 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 enjoy that or to take that as part of their uh, daily uh, routine without uh, without uh, second thought. Whereas I think uh, us older folk are uh, trying to grapple with that, and uh, certainly the idea of. Uh, where can I watch my shows, and why? Uh, why can't I see what I want when I want it? Um, those are issues that are going to have to be uh, addressed by the uh, the big advertisers and the, and the media companies and the and the ad agencies. Is some of it just going to be unpredictable and organic because it's just what's going to happen is going to happen? It's not going to be something that we can control. Totally, there's going to be a lot of unexpected uh, outcomes on. Uh, on some of these things, with uh, winners and losers that uh, uh, won't be uh, won't be able to be predicted, because uh, uh, I mean, some of these services, like some of these platforms, like Snapchat and Twitter, and and some of these other things, were uh, did not literally did not exist just uh, a few short years ago, and now they are uh, being considered alongside uh, traditional media companies that date back a hundred years in terms of. Uh, People deciding where they want to spend their time and advertisers deciding where they want to spend their money. Oh, I have a question for you. But first, let, speaking of advertising and station identification, you're listening to WOR Radio 710 on your digital dial to Stribblings, New York. And we are here with Stuart Elliott and Tony Simone. So, Stuart, here's a question because these are some kind of all the, uh, the years going back even 10 years ago to the upfronts. I remember meeting the cast of NCIS which is still going strong, and it's a pop, it's a wildly popular show. But would they be able to launch a show like NCIS today? Would it be successful, or is it just a thing of the past that is held on because it's from another era and it's carrying through? Um, no, I think it's still possible to launch shows. That are on a network, of, not on Yeah, paper. yeah, yeah. I think it's still possible to launch big, popular, mainstream types of shows, but uh, in many cases... Uh, the popularity of that show of those shows is being fed by the fact that you can watch them on VOD, that you can watch them online, that uh, there are other ways to uh, consume them at a time and place that you uh, that you choose. Uh, so I think in in some uh, in some cases the the new way of doing things is a friend to the old, to the old uh, traditional ways, not a, not an enemy, but. Uh, in other cases, obviously, the uh, the idea that the market is uh, is so fractured and fragmented now, uh, people there's only so many hours in the day still, and uh, for every uh, for every few minutes you spend watching the uh, the woman in the Chewbacca mask, that's uh, time that maybe you won't have to uh, watch a uh, a traditional TV show on a big network at nine o'clock on a Tuesday night. Well, this has been really educational and informative, and I hope that you can uh, call in regularly and visit us on, on occasion as well, because I'd like to keep our audience updated on the information that you have. I enjoy that very much. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks so thanks much for, for joining us. Thank you.